Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to revisit a video that we produced back in 2015 where we compared the Scorpion Evo to the Sig Sauer MPX, both being a nine millimeter. But before we get into today's video, would you please take the time to like, share, and subscribe to our videos? Clicking that subscribe button just takes a moment and it really helps us out. A surprisingly small number of people who watch our videos actually subscribe to them. So just take a moment and click that, that subscribe button. You can turn off notifications. You won't get spammed by email. And by commenting down below, that really does help us with the algorithm. So if you would do that and share the videos, that would be awesome. So today's video, we're gonna revisit, like I said, the Scorpion Evo and the MPX. Since 2015, it's now 2021 when we're filming this video, some things have changed fundamentally that we want to talk about in the video. Not so much for this gun, more so for the SIG. And so we're going to delve into those differences, and does that change my opinion of which one of these firearms I think is the best of the two? We're well, going to have to stick around till the end of the video to find out. Let's get started. Guys, please swing by and check out Big Daddy Unlimited BDU. They help support us here at the Military Arms Channel with products and things like that so we can continue to bring you content. There's a link in the video description down below that'll take you to the Mac blog and website. Please follow that link and from there you'll find a link to Big Daddy Unlimited and try them out just for 99 cents. You can see what they're all about. In essence, they're just like a big online store that has amazing prices. So please, again, check out BDU. This is a Sig Sauer MPX current generation. Sig, one of the criticisms I have of the company is that they don't change the nomenclature when they make significant generational changes to their firearms. This should probably be the MPX A2 or the MPX Gen 2 A1, something to let you know that this gun is quite a bit different than the gun that I showed you in 2015. This is a K model. And a few things have happened since our 2015 video. First of all, we learned that the K guns with the 4.5 inch barrels, uh, Jason had traded for one and we took it out and we discovered that it had accuracy issues depending on what muzzle device you put on the firearm. We also discovered through the gauntlet tests of 2020 when we subjected the MPX pistol, just like the one you see here, to the gauntlet, the gun did great in the gauntlet with one major exception the gun hydrolocked. If you put it in water and brought it out for the first or sometimes the second round, the gun simply wouldn't cycle. You'd have to manually eject that spent case and reload the gun. Then the gun would resume normal operation. Well, SIG contacted me and they said that that's been rectified. It was a known issue. They rectified it. Uh, we have made some posts about the changes that were made and I'll show you some pictures of the gas blocks and that's where the, the primary difference is. And the SIG factory gas block, it went from just a single hole to vent the excess gas off to it and to a uh, elongated slot, which vents a lot more excess gas and any water that might be in the piston area of the gas system. And that did rectify the problem. We made a whole video around it showing that this gun will work with water being introduced into the barrel. Originally, a tablespoon of water would cause the gun to malfunction. I also want to disclose that the gun that we used in the gauntlet is something that was sent to us by BDU and that was the gun that we discovered the water problems with. SIG watched that video and said they wanted to send me, no cost to me, a new SIG Sauer MPX current generation with all the updates to show that they had resolved the water or hydro locking issue as I call it. So I have no money in this gun. This was sent to me by SIG, no paycheck, nothing like that, but this gun is a brand new manufactured gun. These things also retail for right around $1,800, so there's no way I'm going to go out and buy one. And at today's prices, they're even higher than that. We see people trying to sell them for $2,500 to $3,500. So we did some additional testing after the gauntlet test, and this thing did really well, again, except with the water. We did some additional testing, confirmed it works in water, but we realized that now we had another sample. So there's been three of these guns that we've used since 2015 in terms of the K configuration, and all three of them exhibited the same accuracy problems. If we take this gun with its four and a half inch barrel, take the birdcage off that it ships with and shoot groups with it, we have a whole video about this out there, which I'll link to. We shoot it with a bare barrel, this gun shoots really tight groups that you would expect a gun of this type to shoot. We screw the birdcage on and those groups open up just a little bit. So with its factory muzzle device, it was enlarging the group size. Then we put a suppressor on it. We tried multiple different suppressors and the groups that we were getting at 50 yards, I wouldn't be able to hit a man-sized target. They went from groups that were like this 
to groups that were like this at 10 yards. <laughs> so, I mean, it was like SMG 45 inaccurate. So what did I do to resolve those issues? We're gonna talk about that because not only is this an $1,800 gun, but I went to and led we trust and purchased one of their 4.5 inch barrels that has a machine tri lug into it and a half by 28 thread on the end. And I purchased one of their adjustable gas regulators and that completely changed the dynamic of this gun. And we're gonna delve a little bit more into that here in a minute. Just wanna make sure that it's empty. We're shooting some federal 115 grain ball. We do wanna thank our friends over at Federal for supplying the ammunition free to the channel. I love working with them. I've shot their ammunition since I was a kid. Please check them out. I know ammo's hard to find right now. But on the end of the gun, I have a, uh, it's a DZ9 or D9Z suppressor from Zenith. This is designed for roller delayed firearms, but I, I've put it on here and found that it works pretty darn good. It is attached via a tri lug on top and EOTech. The accuracy of this thing is spot on at this point. All right, we are about 10 yards from the target. Eleven yards from the target, and that is the group that I fired, just rapid fire. Okay? I wasn't taking my time. Had I done this before with the SIG factory barrel with the suppressor, I probably would have only hit maybe a third of the rounds fired out of the magazine because the group size would have been larger than this challenge steel target. So at 11 yards, completely changes the game. This gun, off a rest, will literally print little tiny groups at 25 yards. So the barrel did change things. One of the things I get asked all the time is, Mac, how can I get involved in the firearms industry? Well, one of the best ways to do that is to consider going to Modern Gun School. It's an accredited school, and they offer all the modern classes that will get you up to speed and be able to empower you to go out and find a job in the gun industry. You can learn gunsmithing and things like that, and you learn from home. So please check them out. I have a URL down in the video description below. If you take a look at our wind conditions today, you'll see there's nothing moving around back there. We have a zero wind value today. So the gas that's gonna hang around by the gun is gonna do just that, hang around. So let's see how much gas is in my face with the Scorpion Evo versus the MPX with the modifications that I've made, the adjustable gas block, which is in lead we trust, and the new 4.5 inch barrel, which is from in lead we trust. Now the Scorpion, nothing has changed internally by CZ. Tons of aftermarket designed parts like the pistol grip here, which is Magpul. I really like this grip. This grip changes the angle. So the factory selector lever no longer bites into your hand or is hard to manipulate. So that's still factory, SB tactical brace, EOTech sight on the top, factory sights, and a Revolution 9 uh, in a K configuration from Griffin Armament for suppressor on the end. But internally, CZ has not changed anything that I'm aware of with maybe how they put their triggers in the, in the trigger uh, housing. Um, where you don't have to drill things out anymore, I don't believe, to put a different trigger in it. But aside from that, functionally, there's nothing that has changed internally. This gun has always been a good suppressor host, meaning it didn't blow gas in my face back then, and today, it still does not. All right, from 11, 12 yards, rapid fire, same size group. And the Evo, if I take my time and sit down off a rest again, it's gonna shoot little tiny groups, suppressed or unsuppressed, just like the MPX does now with the aftermarket barrel and gas adjustment valve or gas regulator. So as you can see, I didn't start choking. My eyes aren't watering or anything like that from the use of this gun, even though we have no wind. So let's grab the MPX again. And I want to, this time I want you guys to watch how much gas hangs around my face and then I'll show you my eyes after I shoot it and let's see if it chokes me out now based upon the changes that I've made to the gun. Yeah. 
So with the MPX and the modifications that I've made to it compared to the Scorpion Evo with regards to being suppressed, accuracy is the same and the amount of gas to the face is probably a little bit more with the MPX, but it's completely manageable at this point. This gun still does have less gas to the face. But what we discovered in our gauntlet testing, we already talked about the MPX and how it performed. It was doing great in the sand, dirt, and mud. The water is what jammed it up, but we've already done another video showing the current gas block and how it resolves that issue. With the Scorpion, we were just blown away by its really bad performance in the gauntlet. Now, of course, as I tell you guys, they're non-scientific tests. They're meant mostly for entertainment. But what we discovered was this gun went down really fast and really hard. And that was one of the biggest problems I had back in 2015. I assumed this gun was going to be more reliable than the MPX, and I was wrong. This gun in adverse conditions is not nearly as reliable as the MPX, especially if you take the MPX and close its port cover, it's a sealed system. So this gun is less reliable, in my opinion, than the MPX. And the accuracy advantage it has is gone with the third party market barrel system in it and gas regulator. But the other problem I've had with this gun, even after running it through the gauntlet and thoroughly cleaning it and soaking it in oil, I don't know if Jason can get a shot inside there. We can't get the rust out of the gun. It's worth noting that the gun that we used for the MPX from Big Daddy Unlimited, Jason has been using that gun and shooting it quite a bit. He took it home, didn't clean it for three days, and just kept shooting it, and that gun doesn't have a touch of rust anywhere on it. This thing was thoroughly cleaned and soaked in oil, and I keep finding rust in the barrel, rust on that op rod, and I'm gonna to have to completely disassemble it again and try to scrub out wherever that rust is. The MPX isn't rusting at all. All right, so mag dump, watch the gas. Yeah, about the same actually, about the same. You can see even more of that rust on that uh, recoil rod in there that, ho that uh, holds the recoil spring. I will also say that this gun recoils much more abruptly than the MPX. So with the gas block on the MPX, I can adjust it with the Inlet We Trust adjustable regulator. It has four positions, zero is off, and then you have one, two, and three, each, each number representing a slightly larger hole in the, op, in the uh, gas piston plug. I'm running it on position one with a suppressor, and that thing is a pussycat. You can also buy extra power springs from Inlet We Trust and tune it even more. I'm not gonna mess with it because it's 100% reliable with and without the silencer on it, but that gun is significantly less punchy, less snappy than this one is because this one has a big massive bolt in it that's slapping around inside of its polymer receiver and that reciprocating mass translates into the gun moving and being a little bit more punchy, if you will, than the MPX. So which one would I pick? The Scorpion Evo represents the best value, if you will, for your money. This thing retails right now for around $900, which is about half the price of retail for the MPX. So the MPX is substantially more expensive. Then you add on the $600 I had to include into the gun to get it to shoot accurately suppressed, and now you're talking about $2,400 versus $900 for this. That is a significant difference in terms of cost. The things I don't like about the Scorpion is it didn't do well in adverse conditions. I would expect more of a military type firearm. The rust is just awkward. I, I, wouldn't, I would think that it wouldn't be rusting. The MPX isn't rusting. I don't even know if that thing's been thoroughly cleaned yet. Uh, this thing just continues to show signs of rust inside of it. Uh, I do like the fact that this gun has a lot of aftermarket support for it. So you not only have a, a lower initial cost to getting into this gun, but you have a ton of products that are available for it that, uh, that really, I don't think there's any other gun out there aside from the AR-15 that's been so widely supported by the third party aftermarket. So in those regards, in terms of price, in terms of accessories and things like this, this is definitely the best value. I'm going to do one more mag dump with it because I think Jason slipped on the ice out here when we were trying to look at the gas in the face. I'm going to do one more mag dump out of this and let's take a look at the MPX and I'll tell you which one I think I would choose if I could only have one of the two. Ken, 
no gas to the face, all right? Very little. I can get a hint of it, no different than the MPX. I'm putting my glasses on, guys, because I'm shooting steel at fairly close range. The MPXK. SIG, update your nomenclature when you make significant generational changes. Also, SIG, please, from what I understand and talking to Inled We Trust, it's, it's a matter of the gun being wildly overgassed that's causing the accuracy issues. It's not that it's a bad barrel. They believe it has something to do with the gassing of the gun, which, based upon the fact that I have their barrel and their gas plug, and this thing is shooting lights out now in the exact same configuration I had it before when it was shooting all over the place, I would say that in lead we trust is onto something. So Sig, if you could, please take a look at that. That's, that's huge, especially for the 1% of us in the gun community that like to silence our firearms. Um, this, this gun is a great suppressor hose now. I don't have the gas in my face. It's not rusting out. It did extremely well in the gauntlet. Now that we've taken the water factor out, this is probably one of the most reliable nine millimeter guns of its type that I own. This is a really nice gun. The downside, this is a ridiculous ridiculously expensive gun, especially when you have to go out and spend another $600 just to get it to work the way you want it to. And in my case, that means running it with a suppressor. So with all that being said, the only difference between this and the Scorpion is being price. If we take that out of the equation, this gun is the better of the two, but it's gonna cost you a lot more to get there. But this gun is definitely more reliable hasn't rusted out on us after the gauntlet test, the, the Scorpion has. It's accurate after you spend another 600 bucks in upgrading the barrel and gas plug in port. And it is the softest shooting of the nine millimeter guns I have of its type. So all things considered, this very well may be in its current configuration, my favorite nine millimeter gun of its type. It's just that ridiculous cost. I certainly wouldn't recommend going out and buying one of these at today's prices. This group was fired 15 rounds from the Scorpion Evo and 15 rounds from the MPX in its current configuration. And as you can see, they stacked the rounds on top of each other. So at 20 yards, they are shooting pretty much the same in terms of accuracy using 115 grain ball. And that was fired from the standing position unrested. So very comparable in terms of performance. While I'm out here, I might as well show you the uh, new Challenge Steel Targets are easily broken down and are portable so that you can easily pick them up and throw them in your vehicle now. This is a, a new setup from Challenge Target and we actually love this system. This thing works really, really well when you have to move targets around. All right, guys, if you like having honest, unbiased information as humanly possible, we're supported by you, our viewing audience. If you'd like to support us and become part of our Patreon family, there is a link down below. Please click that link. You get early access to videos, direct access to us. We answer all private communications. We post blog posts and things like that that are not publicly available, only to our Patreons. So there's additional perks. Please follow that link down below and become part of our Patreon family. Also, right here on YouTube, there's a little join button right underneath the video player you're watching right now. Click that join button, look at some of the perks, and consider supporting us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> that is ridiculous how fast I can shoot this thing with its flat face trigger in it, and the uh, recoil impulse is definitely more muted than the Scorpion Evo, given how I have it gassed right now. I love this thing. Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to revisit a video that we produced in 2015, where we compared the Scorpion Evo to the Sig Sauer MPX, both being in nine millimeter. But before we get into that's all folks, 